Hey everyone, Viperstrike95 here, and today, happy Sunday everyone, nice to see you all here again, and we're here at Kurgan, this is where we ended up um, completing um, the flight from last week, this was actually the longest leg of a journey last week, so thankfully this week we should have a pretty easy flight for this week. Um, we are here at leg six of the journey. And we're going to do some really interesting low-level flying here in the JU-52. So our plan for today should be a pretty easy one. Should be a very simple uh, flight plan. So we're going to take off here from Kurgan uh, Airport. We're going to fly 136 miles with the 94 degree heading all the way to nearby Petropavl, and we're going to visit the Petropavlovsk South Airport in Kazakhstan. We'll be visiting a new country today. And then from there, we'll go 143 miles uh, with a 72 degree heading to the city of Omsk, located in its own Ob Omsk Oblast in Russia, the largest and administrative city of the entire area. So pretty easy flight, nothing major, nothing complex. This one is a really simple and easy one for today. And I want to look into the chat now. Hello, Night Zep. Great to have you here. Martel172. Uh, good, good morning to all of you. So, it's great to have you here. This is what Kurgan looked like. The weather today is good. There is nothing major they said in the notes. But it should have good visibility. And here, we, we're going to stay low. So, as long as we do that, we will have great visibility. So again, I return back to the Yonkers JU-52, a plane that I'm particularly an expert in, if I say so myself. So for a lot of you, for those who don't know, this plane is one of the most iconic uh, aircraft of the 1930s, made of um, coagulated dura aluminum, which gives it a really unique airframe. This is a tri-motor powered by three BMW 192A engines producing 750 horsepower each. And the reason we took this for the flight, for the 1926 uh, flight, is because this is what the later evolution of the Yonkers JG24. So we get back to the cockpit here. Let's get back to the cockpit and we should return back. Now, let me go ahead and get this plane started. I'll go through the checklist for all those who've never started the plane for the first time. This is just something I like to do for all newcomers. Now, this here is the battery. We batteries here. Turn on. These are idle. Off. Parking brake will be set, which is here. That's where the parking brake is located. The pita here. There's the pita here, right down here. You turn that on. 
the indicator should be turned off, which is right here. There's the indicator. Then we just turn this thing back off. The flight controls are now correct. Now we get, before we start the engines, we need check fuel. I will give it, um, I will move it to 75%. That way we would have plenty of fuel. Fuel quality is good. All terminators set pretty well. Now we turn, now we get the three engines. Since this is three engines, we'll have to go ahead and get all three started. So turn on the starter master. We turn on the uh, primer. We turn on the shutoff valve. And then this one's one of the more unique things. There's the wobble pump. This will let us turn on the engine, the, the outer left and outer right engines. So we start with engine free first. We go this to the, it, it should be set on to Vaughn pump hand pump off, which is right here. We need to turn that, that should be here. Now, now once we do that, we should open up the magneto cap, which is right here. Then the magneto should, which should be switched to both, which it is. The mixture is already rich. And then we pull the engine here. Right here, that's good. Engine's on. And then we turn on the fuel lubricant supply. To run, which is full. Everything's good, everything's good. Adjust for 1000 RPM or less. And that's good. Now we, now we do the exact same thing for the engine number one. I will have to move the camera so I can turn this to both. Go ahead and start this again. Engine number one. Do the same thing as before. Once we do that, um, then we close the wobble pump, which is this, and cover. And then we start engine number two. Now, engine number two, for the most part, is similar to engine number one. However, there is a key difference. We will have to turn on the fuel pump, and that's located right here. There's the fuel pump. One. Here. Make sure it's rich. Then we pull the engine. Then we turn off the fuel pump, which is located right here. Oil pressure is good. Then we turn on the change the ignition delay. That's good. That's good. We can turn off that. We then turn off the Ignition pump. Why no fuel pump for engine number one? I think it's only available for engine number two, friends. All good to see in the chat. I think it's only for engine number one, engine number two. Probably because the other two have the nebulizer and the Shaw valve. If that's what you probably want to know. There's there's like no real manual for this thing. That's just that. Um, before we get going, I want to go ahead and turn on some of the um, lights, mainly the nav lights, beacon lights, strobe lights, and wing lights. I want to go ahead and turn those on. So we'll get this part So we should be kept under 1,500 feet. Uh, visibility is good. 
Um, question is, guys, do you think I should try and hand fly this? Or should I put on the gyro pilot? I think I should hand fly it, because I bet, I bet they only use the gyro pilot when they need to. Um, okay. So we get to turn on the one stage of flaps. Let me go ahead and set the trim to take off. That should be good. Put the power. And I think we'll be getting ready to take off. 19. Seventy knots, we should be taking off really easy. We just only one stage of flaps necessary. There is count zep. And there's Martel in the in the turbo arrow. Quite a capable plane. I'm gonna go ahead and circle around for a little bit, waiting for everyone else to get, get up in the air. For those who don't know, I'm on Southeast Asia. A lot of streamers have been using Southeast Asia for their flights today. Okay, I think I think everyone's in the air. I believe. Let's go ahead and get to. That's weird, my plane's not showing up on the blue nav map. That's weird. Even around 2,000 feet and such. Well, you know what stinks? Uh, my plane isn't showing up. The thing that stinks is I could my, I can't see my plane. What's the advantage of Southeast Asia? Well, it seems to have the least disappearing issue. People don't disappear as much on Southeast Asia compared to the other servers. That's why everyone seems to be using it for that reason. Oh, great. Um, here's my issue. I, I, um, for me, my plane's not show up on my nav map. That's a big issue, because, uh, should I, should I go ahead and exit out and then restart flight again? Just, I'll start back at the runway.
Maybe it's not connected. Oh, that fixed it. Uh, th thanks, Night's Up. Okay. That fixed it. Thanks. Thanks so, thanks so much. I'll be doing this one handful. I'm, I just made a connect next up. It, I got it back. So, according to our notes, um, they spent four hours of refueling and maintenance as they took off from Kurgan. So, around 14.20, they fly over to... At 14.20, which is 2 o'clock, I think. Working ones, they fly over Petra Palmas. So once we get there, we'll just change the 220. Though so they, they did say they moved to time four an hour. So once we leave Cargan, we we move into time four. Yeah, they're in the act target burn. Um, Omsk. Um, is about an hour four. The petrol Pavel. That's located in Kazakhstan in the Alamani time zone. So it's in the same time zone as the Ops. So we do have to move forward now once we reach Petro Pavel. I admit that's what we So if you want me to, I can make it go a little slower. You guys don't mind. So let's look to see who's flying with us. I see Count Zeph. I see Prince of all you took the H 145 helicopter. That's an interesting choice. And there's Martel 748, and he's taking the rope arrow. So let me get a shot out and get everyone here. Yeah, you can definitely hear the really nice sound of that game uh, engine. Though so I wish it could be a little louder, though, since this aircraft in real life is actually quite a loud bird. You know what I mean. There's good visibility, you can definitely see quite a bit here. We get to see some, we get to buy over some of the smaller Russian towns and such. chat is, um, I hope you all have had a great weekend so far. I know there's been a lot of fun flying today. Ah, Dr. Noss comments on these circular lakes. Yeah, he, he describes many of these circular lakes right here. There's a lot of these small little circular lakes above here. And some of the countryside's covered with woods, but from what I tell them, there are woods right here. There's no key to cover that. So there's lots of these circular lakes. There's a lot of them. You get more bird down to uh, light speed. Absolutely, he does.
But yeah, I'm hoping you all kind of get so far. I mean, there's been a lot going on. I know the really unfortunate thing is I wish my pilot could have been a little bit later. I could have rated pilot to the stream, but he's doing his flight later today on his channel. If you guys haven't checked him out, check, uh, let me give you a shout out for Pilot Keeley. I don't know if he's, if he's ever here or watching it, but if you are here, Pilot Keeley. A shallow thing when I'm working. Um, oh. oh, let me go ahead and spray things to me. Let me let me give a shout out again. Good way. Oh, so, so you me, know, let me go ahead and I'd rather it. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. I apologize. But check out Paolo Peely's channel. He's doing a memorial flight um, today, and he's doing it on. Uh, he's me he's memorializing one of the good points of the Simway community, Bax, who just passed away earlier in December. He was originally going to do it Thursday, but with so, with the issues of the Sim, he moved it to this Sunday at 1900. So if you guys get the opportunity, um, definitely pay, check him a visit. Um, definitely give him a full, really nice, really awesome bite sim content creator. And he makes some great content, so please check out Paul Keeley. I think, tell him that Viper's are going to be Yeah, there's so many of them, by the way. From the window, there are so many of these circular lakes. I, I, I'm actually curious why they make those lakes so circular. I think I think this is these are pothole lakes. All these little lakes here, these are potholes, I believe. I'm just reading that from the from NASA's observatory. So the story. Let's see if we can spot the railway. I think I saw the railway a little earlier. Yeah, because that's the that's I think that's the like Train Siberian Railway, I believe. We should go lower because that probably makes spot a little easier. Okay, that okay, it's not the train center, that's one of the other railways in Russia. Oh, you're the H145. I don't have the H145 for a doll. Oh, I think I do. See. Yeah, I see the railway. It's it's right here. Yeah, there's the railway. Yeah, he fell. Yeah, there's the railway run. Oh, let me go. Be right here in this area, guys. This is the railway line, and in, in, in the real flight, this is where he fall. He fall that railway 
where the railway goes, um, will reach over there. First I thought these lakes were related to the meteorites, but eventually they had to do with permafrost. But I'm not so sure. Well, according to the NASA site, um, um, the reason those lakes exist is because, um, the Ice Age, the Pleistocene Ice Age, um, when the glaciers were treated, large ice chunks broke off there, and eventually it's surrounded and buried by soil and debris. And that creates the depression on the ground. And eventually those things became the kettle lakes, or pothole lakes. And because Siberia is so cold and all that, there, there's a lot of them here. You can also find them in North America as well, especially in Canada, you can find all those pothole lakes. So it's due to the large glaciers, all that melting works out. But definitely a very interesting point out here. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Man, there's so many of these lakes. Look at all these puzzle lakes, guys. There's so many of them. Like, that's really cool. Like, I didn't think... I know, I know Russia having all those glaciers. I didn't think Russia had that many lakes. Definitely very, very cool. That's yes, true. There's so many little ones. Good morning. Or now be good to see you, my friend. We're playing some exciting music. Here's the railway line. Uh, do, do you want me to uh, try and follow that railway line? And see where that takes us? Let's go follow that railway line. Because that's what he did in the real journeys, they had to follow the railway line. Well, we can follow the railway lines for a little bit.
as Viper Strike 95 knows, there's this new app called the Mobile Companion app. Yeah, I, I did it. Um, it's a nice little thing, but it's but it's not my real cup of tea. I'd rather do it in the sim. This is more intuitive. This is more authentic just to do it in the simulator. Yeah, it's a nice little app. You can get this on Flight Sim TO. I believe if I'm correct, I think this might be the what Siberian in Broadway? The railway that I think he followed? But I don't know what kind of railway he probably followed. Because I'm not really trying to do Yeah, crucial point, this is both status point and alternative control method. I use a JSON monitor. Yeah, you can do that too with the monitor. I'll check it out. Yeah. But definitely a very nice day here out here. show you something a little unique on this plane in particular. So it, the three engines definitely has its advantage when it comes to safety. So for example, if I dismantle, if I turn off this engine here, these middle engine, I could still fly with the other two engines because that's actually a design feature of this Junker. A lot of people don't realize. See, if 
Kong left the second engine and had less RPM than the door one, but I can still fly just fine with 170 knots. Oh yeah, if you want to see the screen lines, oh yeah, open street map. Yeah, let me show you the open street map. Yeah. Let me, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So right here, on the street map version, you can see the railway lines quite clearly. But now the railway lines go to our left. lines to our left. In fact, if we were to follow those railway lines, it would actually take us straight to Petropolis. It would, it would take us straight there. Pretty cool. So I'm actually looking up on the Russian Railways website. Usually I use Google Terrain for a little nap. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. So apparently it's in the it's it's from the Samara route, I think. Or route. I think we know where this, what this is. I believe this is the South Urals Railway. That's the one I think was built. It used to be part of the Earl Railway until 1934. And it's part, and it's part of the southern route of the Trans-Siberian Railway. Yeah, it's the South Urals. Yep, that's correct. Just realized that. Did I do a whole PowerPoint slide about the Trade Siberian Railway? That is what, for the most part, that is what they follow. I didn't think about that.
definitely very nice here. So welcome everyone in the chat. Good to see all of you all here. We're flying our way to our first stop at Petropavl in Kazakhstan. We're, we're going to we'll hopefully try to follow all of those uh, rail routes. Hey, Splasher 6. Good to see you. This trip's going great. Uh, we're flying toward Petropavl, Russia. And we definitely see one of the unique landmarks of this area, apparently, the natural park. All those circular lakes you can see here. There's so many of these little lakes, and that is due to the fact that we have all those glaciers that have melted. Oh, I see Alex D in the Turbo Arrow as well. So Alex D's with us. Followed by friends of all the age one goes by, Martel and Kelly Snap as well. So we have all those people with us here today. I'm actually hand flying this one today. Here's some hand flying. But it's definitely very nice out here today. What a great flight. So yesterday I actually took this Yunkers out with Alvin Johnson's flight yesterday. He flew from Kuzma to she flew from Burbank to Tucson. And since, it, since she's going to go around 1.30, this is actually great. I can take the younger for that. That's going to be pretty cool. I mean, it would fit the time, time frame. Oh. Well. But yeah, what a beautiful flight here today. There's so many of these little legs, Flasher. But can the G-52 keep up with the Electra? Um, the Electra cruises around 143, I believe. Um, I believe, I don't think, the max speed of this is 143. 143 knots is the max speed. Her Electra, um, the Electra plane, um, I don't think, the Electra cruises around 150, I think. If she has the model 10 electron, which is the one she took, that cruises at around 153 knots. However, the thing is, can I say that? During her speed, she usually cruises at around 130, apparently. So, actually, I can fly the other with her flight. But the way she's flying from Allison Johnson, I see I can use it to mostly keep up with her if she's cruising by 130 or something. Yunker should have no problem with it. It's when she gets above 140 knots is where things get more interesting. But yeah, it's a good question. But yeah, great question. Yeah, 130 is doable in the Electra, absolutely. And this thing can easily do 130, especially if you put it like all the way to the green marks here. You put it all the way to the further of the green, and 130 should be easily accomplished. No problem. In fact, that's its max effective cruise speed is 130. So, yeah, it's more than doable. Especially if you have the 1939 version especially.
There's more of that rail line over here. We see more of it. I'm keeping near the railway line. I'm not going to fall exactly to the railway line, but there's the railway line. And Petropolis is right over here. It's going to be coming up pretty soon. Around um, a good 60 or like a mile to get to the airport. Why over some overgrown circular lakes? Yeah, there are some huge ones, mind you. From all those glaciers, see all those huge lakes. And for those who probably um, weren't there for me talking about it, these um, these lakes have been around um, since at the end of the ice age, when when the ice age uh, went down. The blocks of ice there are still remaining from the glaciers melted and when they push down the weight it forms these purple lakes. And that's due to all the depressions on the ground from the ice. And that's why you have varying sizes of the lakes. If you want to see them the close to home, you can fly over large parts of North America, especially in Canada. You can see them all over Alaska and Canada as well, not just here in Russia. It's certainly not you at all. That was pretty cool, to say the least. Alex D. Friends all is ahead of us. Martel and Count Zapper with us. So all it's amazing people flying with us today. I thank everyone here. Hey Goblin Zeus, good to see you around here. Hi, oh, you visit your visit with a friend. Nice. I hope that went really well with, with you and him. With you and your friend. So we're flying towards Petropopple. For leg number, um, for leg number six of our journey, and then we'll finally head our way to um, Omsk, which is the largest city and administrative city of its oblast. No worries, uh, I got you're loading the sim. Nice. Petropopo. 
and then we're head to our, then after that we'll head to our final destination in in Oms, which is the largest city of its uh, whole planet. Inside the mighty Yonkers, I mean an absolute classic of a, a classic uh, bird. Not just a airliner, but a warbird as well. Especially being valuable for carrying lots of cargo. Actually, let me show you the route uh, so far. Let me pull up my slideshow. Right here. So, this is, uh, let me show you the entire route. Uh, I've been working really hard on this. So, all the lakes so far um, is this. This is the actual route, Exponent Mage 40. Um, the, the crap of this book, it, this is based on real life. Knights Up was the one who has this book. And let me be going over all the routes. This will be for all the lakes. So, leg one is from Berlin to Konigsberg, while visiting the city of Gdansk. Then, from Konigsberg, we head our way to Smolensk. Oh, excuse me. Hey, Diggy Decimus with a rating party of eight. Thank you so much, Diggy Decimus, for coming to my stream. So, Diggy, how was your flight to China? I know I probably should do in that some flight to China at some point. So, I hope everything went well for today's stream. So, basically, we go, like, one, Berlin to Connorsburg. Like, two, from Connorsburg to Smolensk. Then, like, three would be from Smolensk to Moscow. Then, from Moscow, we head to Kazan. Then leg five would be the longest as we flow from Kazan to Kurgan, and then we're on our leg six from Kurgan to Omsk. Then the next week's leg will be Omsk to Bobrinsk. Then Bobrinsk to Novosibirsk, then Kraso uh, Narsh, into Urbrinsk, Uriusk. Then from Erskunik to Chita. Then we go to Manchuria in China as we visit Charmin. Then to Bukden or Shenyang. And then finally to Beijing. So that would be for the entire route um, for the trip. Good to see all of y'all here. Yes, rain hard. Welcome, all Raiders. Raid two cats. Hey, two cats. Um. Good to see you, TC. Um, I'm very excited for the around the world trip you're doing. I mean, it's a pretty big, uh, ambitious task to do around the world in seven days in the DC-6. And for guys who don't know, Two Cats is the master of all things DC-6. Um, and that's, that's not putting it lightly. Two Cats, awesome content creator. He's also a Two-Tone Murphy affiliate and a good friend to the Two-Tone Murphy Blind Service community to have you here and if you guys haven't checked him out definitely check out Diggy Decimus awesome content creator as well despite being you his content is really really good and he and he also does the Zero Rutherford journey from around the world as well and I mean that would be one heck of an achievement if Zara Rutherford can complete her around the world like what an amazing achievement be the youngest woman to go around the world solo what a fantastic achievement. So let me let me go ahead and um, zoom out for print to the scenery. So we have 
we have Martel, Count Zeph, Prince of All. And in the back, we have Alec D. Good to see you. So one of the more unique things about the landmarks here, um, in this part of Russia, is you see all those circular lakes. That is because when the glaciers melted at the end of the uh, and during the most recent ice age, the depressions left on it, and as the ice melted, it eventually formed these lakes. And you can find them all over Siberia, but also you can find them in, um, you can also find them in Canada as well. No winter textures. Is that a bug or that a specific time of year? Well, the reason we have no winter textures is because this is a historical recreation. So I moved it to August 27th, 2022. And, that, and, that, and that's the reason. It's trying to make it like the real time. No appears based on the local weather. Yeah, if, if you want me to, let me show you what it looks like in live weather. I apologize if I change the weather. Let's look at this. If this is live weather, for example. Oh, yeah, it's horrible. And you can see snow all over the ground. It's all snow. It, like, you can see snow on the ground when it's cold. Oh, crap, yeah. Think? Okay. About winds. Yeah. You see where I'm getting? Yep. Let me go ahead and lower the altitude. And believe it or not, I'm actually hand flying all this. But it doesn't look like it. It's because um, Younger's J52 is really easy to fly and trim this thing. Yeah, you too much anchor cotton candy. Yeah. That's Kahari. Good to have you here. Now, one more thing, guys, if you haven't noticed, Kaharia actually streams here on Twitch. So check her out. She's really, she's a really fun, interesting content creator coming from Austria. And she's a really good pilot of the TVM. She knows how to fly that thing really well. And, guys, I think we now just entered Kazakhstan, I believe. We just passed the border. We're now entering Kazakhstan. It flies it as if we had rails. Yeah, this thing's really easy to fly. Such a smooth bird, to say for the least. <sighs> I'll get the doggos out for a walk. He gets the dinner on the table. Have fun, Viper. Pilots, cheers. Cheers to you, Dai Daiki. I hope your I hope I hope your dogs uh, enjoy the walk. Mm -hmm. Lots of sinkhole things around here. Well, uh, Spock Tor. These are circular lakes. Um, and if you don't, and if you, if you haven't all realized this, this is affected by uh, the ice age. When the ice age waned uh, after 22,000 years ago, it left these ice blocks. And those ice blocks weighed a lot, so they caused depressions on the ground. And eventually, when they started melting, they formed these little bubble lakes. You can find them all over the area. That's why there's so many of them all throughout Siberia now. If I have I have it in my Discord, I I, I should probably update my Discord link. It's actually a good time for this. I'll put it on my stream links and um So guys if you haven't checked it, if you want to get any more great content updates for my stream and such. I do have a Discord, and I also have a YouTube channel, um, on here too. So I do want to talk a little bit, um, a little bit later, we're in Kazakhstan now, we're in the northern region. 
Panda has a law of lakes, but different than these for, for the reasons he describes. Yeah, a lot of Panda's lakes are within mountainous regions. Um, there's a lot of these big mountain lakes, but Siberia's flat, so that's when you see all the lot more of these pommel lakes. Actually, friends all, if you're talking about the mountains of British Columbia, um, the lakes I'm talking about is when you get further north. Um, um, when you get further north into the Arctic regions of Canada, friends all, you'll see plenty of those as well. Let me get the Discord uh, shout out. Yeah, here's my Discord, guys. And I'll put the link of that in my stream uh, links. And these are all the pothole lakes in Siberia. You can find them all over the place. They're, they're, they're all over the place. very nice to do and check out. So we're going to be flying to a petrol pommel. Uh, that's going to be our um, flight, so let me go ahead. Right. I only got three slides for today. This is going to be a really short flight anyway. So Petro Pommel um, is located, it's located on the Isham River in northern Kazakhstan. It's about 261 kilometers from Omsk. It's actually the capital of the northern Kazakhstan region, with a population of 201,000 people. And it was founded in 1752 as a military fortress of St. Peter. And during the Second World War, many heavy machinery factories have actually operated from it. Now, this city now, in the 14th and 15th centuries, the Kazakh uh, Khanate, which is one of the um, Central Asian uh, tribes, was formed during the modern territory of Kazakhstan in one of, the, one of these routes located in the north near Patrapal. Around this site. During the Soviet Union part of World War II, um, Petropavl was, um, was a major part of the, of the Second World War. You see, many machinery factories would have to be evacuated in the rear because the Soviets were facing huge losses and they had to move the factories or else they would be destroyed by the Germans. So the Soviet Union moved a lot of its stuff to the Urals and into Central Asia. And since the city was at the uh, of your city, they built a lot of heavy machinery factories there. They included the Lenin plants, the Essen Kirov plant, and the Kushvia plant. And usually they built tanks, armor personnel carriers, and so on. And that was a big part of World War II, was moving all those factories. There's also, um, there's also a theater located there as well. There's also a North Kazakhstan Regional Museum in the city as well. So there's definitely a bit of an interesting thing about it. Um, so that is going to be Petropavl. Not too much interesting about it, but definitely, definitely something to look forward to. So let's look at the notes. So we're gonna, I'm going to try and catch up to the railway line and fly over the city before we fly into the airport and then we can navigate back 
you um, but I appreciate everyone coming here I'm really I'm really liking this thank you guys so much for coming here some absolute incredible stuff here so we have Alex D here I wish I had a nearest airport thing somewhere. Maybe I could put a nearest airport up here. Give it right. Hey, Cosmo Kramer has just followed the channel. Cosmo Kramer, thank you for coming here today on blank six of my night of my historical recreation of George Lufthansa's 1926 Berlin's Wine Tank. I appreciate all of you guys coming here today. This is a really fun stream. We're flying to Petropolis. And we're heading our way to um, eventually end up in Ops. The loot, good to have you here, Cosmo Kramer. It's a beautiful day out here. Gobbles is just loading your position, almost fit. Nice. Thanks for uh, coming here. Petropolis is going to be located over here. Um, should be approaching the city pretty soon. And I believe we should be near our airport. Uh, let's look at the time. Ah, we almost hit 1420. We almost got it in time. When it's down here in 2000 feet. Wow, the SIP put me 28,000 28, feet. Where are you, Goblin? Oh! <laughs> uh, goblin, dr go dr Goblin's all the way up at 20,000 feet. <laughs> oh no. Goblin. You better make it down there safe, like, from 20,000 feet. I know... I know a lot of you probably would not expect that. Previet. Previet Gobble Zeus. They're found. Nice view. Yeah, at least you got a nice view from up there. That's for sure. At least so. So there is Petra Pobble to our left. Uh, we should be getting the first. Yep, we should get ready to continue on. If you guys are enjoying this flight and if, and if you want to continue to support the channel, don't be afraid to smash that follow button as well. Now right over here is Petropavl, right here. There's the city. Now, during the flight um, at the airport, we're not going to do touch and go, but there should be a navigation fire. There's a fire at the airport, and they use it to help guide um, our flyers from Pacho Pablo and then guide them to the direction where we need to fly from Ox. Ah, uh, hey, good morning to Humber 8242. Hello to Scotland. Welcome. That cap is glorious. It is. It is. I don't know if that's what they flew back in the 1920s. 
and there's our airport down over here. Is this game any good? It is. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is really good. It is very good number. If you like flight simulating, this is the one you want to get. I always fly X-Plane. Yeah, this thing, scenery, is it just... I, this is my first real simulator number, and I'm really, really enjoying this. It's, it's a really, really nice simulator as well. It's definitely a good pick. And I'm flying one of the add-on planes. I'm flying... This is the J-2 from Microsoft. This is one of their third-party planes they've made. I do need a fan, but I don't need it in front of me, Kaharia. A good question. Uh, but I don't like flying that. I don't like wearing that cap for too long, though. It, doesn't, it just doesn't feel comfortable with my head. There's our airport. Once we do this, we can turn around. I wish. I mainly wore that um, when I caught the steerman. So definitely very cool to talk about. I appreciate all you guys here in the chat. You're amazing, awesome people. Thank you so much. The only thing that stinks about this, though, is I'm not going to have the time to catch, uh, to rate how it moves. I may be at the wrong airport. Um, UACP. There's one other airport, the UAPT. Alec D is... Hey, there's your Petropolis. No, you're at the right airport, actually. Um, so, guys, this is actually... You're actually the correct airport. You're at Airport Petropolis. You're at the right airport. Um, it handles the medium-sized airliners. There's currently flights for this airport. Um, they usually fly into Alamati, North Fulton, and Shikimit. Those latter two are the two of the more important cities in Kazakhstan. I see you below me. We're not landing here, but... Um, Ah, cool, right airport and one way. They only have one airport and one way. Yeah. By the way. So that there's the airport right there. Um, now, in this, now, if you want to buy this plane, it is for 15 US dollars. But if you're talking about the real life cost, that's, um, uh, that's a good question. They never mentioned the cost of it from all the reading I've done. But if I were to guess, I would say a couple hundred thousand dollars. I think probably either t up to a hundred thousand dollars. I don't really know. But good question. In sim, it is it is fifteen US bucks, fifteen USD, um, fifteen bucks USD. And if you want to convert to euros, um, I, I believe that's ten euros. Actually, it's 13.14 euros. It's 13 euros or 15 American dollars. So it's actually pretty cheap. It, it includes servers, but but what about cup holders? Well, I'm going to search and tell you. 
yeah, there's an overhead window on this. You open this up, and there is the overhead window. 15 bucks is okay. Yeah, it's it's pretty cheap compared, and this thing is extremely high quality, actually. For the 15 bucks, the quality of this is actually great. It's easy to apply. Very, very easy to apply trim. You have four different models. This is the 1939 version. You can also get one for the skis and floats. And, um, and there's also a retrofit version, which actually, if you guys don't know about it, it's actually based on the real uh, J52, Delta, uh, Delta Alpha Quebec Uniform India. And it's and that one has the retrofit um, avionics and such, with all the modern uh, steam gauges and stuff. And this one was actually restored by Martin Kite. Let me go ahead and do this. It's, it was re and that point is restored originally by Martin Kite in his book uh, The Saga of Iron Annie. And he had to replace a lot of the stuff from the original J-52, all the original stuff, he had to replace with modern avionics and such. And then it was later restored by Lufthansa themselves. And that was described in this book. And that's the one they used for the simulator, by the way. So, definitely a lot of history. In fact, I'll be taking the retro version after I get done with this journey for maybe in March or April. Um, I'll be doing the Lufthansa restoration flight up, up the retro vent and take the retro vent from Opelaka outside of Miami and I'll take it all the way to Hamburg, Germany. So it'll definitely be a very cool flight. I definitely should But yeah, I would absolutely get it. It really suits the type of flying you do. And it's really, really easy. So now I'm gonna go talk a little bit about, um, if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Kazakhstan, actually. This is the new country we get to we, we are visiting. So some background information about Kazakhstan. Now, Kazakhstan is actually the largest country in Central Asia. It is it's known as the Republic of Kazakhstan, located, um, it borders Russia to the north and west. Um, it borders China to the east. And then Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan all border it in the south. Its capital is Nur Sultan while its largest city is Alamati. Now, it is actually the world's largest landlocked country. Yes, it's also the world's largest Muslim-like majority country by land area. And believe it or not, in terms of size and territory area, it is the ninth largest country in the world. It has a population of 18.8 million people. And believe it or not, it's, it's actually one of the lowest population densities in the world with fewer than six people per square kilometer. Now, Kazakhstan is the dominant nation of Central Asia, both economically and politically, and you can think of the oil and gas industry, because that produces the region 60% of the region's GDP, but it also has a lot of vast mineral resources as well. Now, Kazakhstan has been historically been inhabited by different nomadic groups and empires. In antiquity, the Scythians inhabited the land, and so did the Persian uh, Achaemenid Empire. Turkic nomads uh, have been around since the Khangans. And then in the 13th century, we also have the Mongol Empire. 
In the 15th century, the Kazakh con uh, conquered much of the land that would form modern Kazakhstan. It, the, the, the Russian uh, ruled over it since the mid 19th century. And it wasn't until modern Kazakhstan was formed in 1991. In fact, Kazakhstan was the last of the Soviet republics to declare independence during the dissolution of the USSR. The pretty cool stuff. Um, there's quite a lot of things that make Kazakhstan quite unique. For one, um, the most important agriculture that you can grow in Kazakhstan are grain, potatoes, grapes, vegetables, lemons, and especially livestock. In fact, some people say that Kazakhstan was one of the places thought that the apple overdrive existed as well. Which is kind of interesting. In addition to this, um, Kazakhstan is very well known for uh, its, its, its unique, unique culture based on their nomadic past, especially with horse riding being a major part. And then tourism has been rapidly growing in Kazakhstan ever, ever since the 2010s. It's been rapidly growing. And of course, Kazakhstan's most popular sport, um, its most successful Olympic sport in recent years, has been boxing, actually. But the most popular sport has been football. No. Definitely some very important Kazakhs as well. Now, some notable people include uh, Pak Talgit uh, Vinica. He's the only Rush, he's the only Soviet Kazakh to win the, uh, to the, to win the Order of Lenin twice, which is the highest award in the Soviet Union. And then Kurt Khan um, was the founder of the Kazakh Khanate, which was uh, put the Kazakhs uh, there as well. Now, landmarks, they include the Hazard Sultan Mosque. In Alamati, the Bay Banter Tower, and in outside Alamati is the big Alamati Lake. Those are kind of the landmarks we found around here. There are definitely some very interesting landmarks here. I know a lot of people when they first think about um, um, Kazakhstan, they think of, of the movie Four Rats, but that's actually not really right. Well, that was some interest. That's pretty cool, and I think that's just the basics of Kazakhstan. Now, the country has been in the news lately because of the oil and the gas prices pretty increasing. Kazakhstan, in recent and re, in, quite in the recent couple days, has faced a lot of political turmoil. So, that's been a big issue with the country that's been there for the last couple days. So let me get back out, out into the, um, get back out. There is Count Zepp, who is a fierce French all through the Zeus, Martel, Alex D, and French all. Uh, so there, there's all you guys here. Oh, have a look at the Discord. Okay, I did quite soon. Ah, uh, nice. That, that's an awesome picture. I should have a slideshow for some of the sim pictures during my journeys. Nice. Yeah, the scenery out here is quite nice out here. Here's one of the, here's more of those pothole lakes that I mentioned. We should have walked. Let's hopefully be right here by six. And we visit the city pumps. So 
a couple of little more tidbits about um, Kazakhstan is that the Kazakh cuisine is quite um, unique. It's similar to Mongolia, and Kazakh cuisine focuses on mutton and horse meat, as well as various milk products. Yes, I mean, horse meat for a lot of those in, in the West, particularly in the U.S., horse meat is kind of taboo, but for here, they actually serve a lot of horse. And that's because they were nomadic tribes. They were part of their one nomadic, so they had to be on the move. They raised not just sheep, but camels and horses. A lot of those animals were transportation to the food. Now, the most popular dish in Kazakhstan uh, is, is Bezbarak Mac. Bezbarak is their uh, uh, is the classic dish. It is the five finger dish, which is um, which is a type of noodles that are served here. Now, fresh for Mark is known as five fingers because they usually eat with their hands. It's made from uh, finely chopped whole meat mixed with noodles and chick, which is an onion sauce. So they basically share the dish. And a lot of these dishes are made from the constraints of the nomadic lifestyle. They also make different kinds of breads. There's also a pilaf, well, dumplings, and there's also Kazakh wine. One of the more well-known drinks is actually kumis, uh, and that basically is is the most well-known kind of um, drinks, and it's actually made from fermented uh, dairy product, mainly from mare, mare's milk or donkey milk. That's like the main alcohol. Quite interesting. Think about, but I mean, it makes sense. For no matter, they have to make the most of every part of the animal. Now, commercially, they have to use cow milk, which is virgin fat before lactose. So according friends all mentioned, there are many exploit devotees. This provides scenery weather as far as multiplayer in the base game. The exploit devotees is hoping to add some similar features. Yeah, I'm hoping exploit will be good, and I'm, and I'm a Microsoft guy. I don't think I'll make the lead, but I can keep it there. Kazakh should not be confused with Kazakh. Correct. Yeah, it's Kazakh. Kazakh can be Kazakh. Can you go on AFK? No worries. Zap, friends of there's your Zeus, Alex D, Martel, and there's Count Zep. Yeah, and we reached one of the other this one of the really big legs here. This stuff is a pretty nice size one. Hey okay, Mongo! Mongo C7, good to see you, Mongo. Yes, I'm in Southeast Asia. Last year's been using it, so I'm gonna continue to use it as well. some poppy music just for fun. I'm picking some nice um some nice cheerful music for today. I feel quite cheerful. So but I appreciate everyone who's come around the fun with me today. I really appreciate all the amazing people here today. I really appreciate everyone for being here. Bossy Lumpkins! Bossy Lumpkins, thank you for the fall. I really appreciate it. Welcome! We're headed to Omsk for leg six of our journey of, of my historical recreation of the 1926 Fortune of Bonza's 
Merlin to Beijing flight. I also put that screenshot into the challenge as well. Awesome. Yes, definitely do it. Russia may be a bit flat here, but it, but Russia has her natural too. These flakes are really cool. Now I think guys we should approach um, there's some bit of that railway line. And once that we can we get back once we fall back, we might get back to the Russian border. So let me pull up the nap map. Um, so once we leave here, we're gonna go home the border, and we're gonna head our way back to Russia. And we follow that until we get to our stop here at Pumps. And that will conclude our flight for today's flight. Which, hey, K Ward, good to see you. Coffee time. Yeah, enjoy your coffee, man. Can't wait for X.12. Yeah, I I'm curious to see what they pull up for X.12. I'm quite curious. I, ne I never played any of the X-Planes. Microsoft Flight Center is the first uh, real flight sim I've been with. So, I'm curious to see how it turns out. Yeah, the turnaround here has been amazing today. Thank you, Evan. to join Pilot Peely on his flight today. He's, he's, he's doing something really ambitious today. Um, this is a memorial flight for one of the um, good friends of his that passed away, Spags OZ. So I hope that we all get to join his flight at some point. Even if I can't raid his stream, I'll definitely join him on the flight. Yeah, the Yunker is really cool. Yunker really, really, really cool. Waste me want to fly MS, MFS. Yeah, the Yonkers is a really, really cool plane. Lots of history. It's it's a really easy to fly. Flies like a green. It's, it's it's very expensive for what you get. It's definitely a favorite of mine in the sim. Hey, two of them tavish. Hey, thanks, Spider Strike. He starts in 1900. Yeah. And let me give him a shout out for Pilot Healy so you can all can join him on his channel. And, give, and definitely give this guy a follow because Pilot Healy is a really awesome flight simmer. He may only stream once a week on Thursdays, but you definitely want to give him your full attention on Thursdays. Because Pilot Healy does some really awesome flight planning and stuff. Definitely check him out. Fuzzy Lump Kids, good to see you. I often switch between MSFS and X-Men because I can't make my mind between airliners and BFR. Yeah, that's a really, that's an interesting thing. Um, because if, if it's the one that x point does much better than Microsoft, yeah, I agree with airlines. That being said, I think the gap's going to close. I mean, the Aerosoft CRJ is really good. I'm not into airliners, but I know that was pretty good as well. There's also the Just Flight VAE 146 that's going to come up really soon. And then there's also the PMBG 737. We're gonna start finally getting some good airliners. And as a GA person, I'm hoping we get some really good airliners. Because I think that's the one thing you see with the cool line. We have amazing military jets, warbirds, GA planes, vintage uh, planes. But airliners are the one thing that I think the sim is And that's just my humble opinion. Or tell us I'm too, I start actually because my plane was too old for MSFS. x was possible with 13 frames per second. <laughs> and my seven went AFK, no worries. 
no worries. Yeah, today is such a nice flight here. Here is Zeph, who I think I see Martel, Through Zeus, Alec D, Fred Alls, uh, AFK at the airport. So guys, if you want to join along, I'm on Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, I don't have the nearest airport route, but I can get you the nearest airport if you want. Uh, but the nearest airport is not until a long while away. Like I said, there's not a lot of airports around Siberia. I'm waiting on the Concord. Yes, I'm waiting on the Concord too. I'm very, I, I definitely want to get the Concord. And I'm not an airliner guy. But yeah. DC-3. Now, airplane happens to make it to DC-3, but I'm very... Um, I don't really trust Aeroplane Heaven very much, due to like the thing with the Electra and all that. That's why I'm holding out my judgment. And then a warmer version of the P-51. Yeah, Aeroplane Heaven makes that too. I just don't really trust Aeroplane Heaven because the customer service isn't that great, and the sounds are not so great on it, from what I've known from Alice. I'm more of an airline guy myself. Yeah. Everyone's got their preferences. Like, I don't mind, I don't mind airliners. It, it's just not my cup of tea. That being said, if I was one an airliner, I'm hoping someone would bring the Dash, uh, the Q400 and port that over from X-Plane to here. That would be an airliner that I would actually fly. It's a turtle prop liner. The DC-6 is an airliner too. Yeah, DC-6... That's also an airliner that I would fly to. EC6 would be the only airliner I would fly. But it's a lonesome airliner, exactly. Yeah. The D Hell and D DC 400 would be amazing. Like the ATR. Like those are airliners I would absolutely fly. As their stuff that I'm familiar with. When it works, it's awesome. It is. I haven't had very many issues for my thing, but I know a couple of few other people had the um, issues as well. So that's kind of how I feel. Yeah, I'm hoping it rocks. I mean, with how good the DC6 was, I'm hoping I have really high expectations of 737. I mean, considering we had the Red Ox 737, this thing is going to blow the old one, the previous one. The PMG 737 will blow that one out of the water. I can't wait. I'm not even an airline guy. Catch a later, my strike. Thank you for coming along, Squawk Tour. Thanks for the follow. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. But take care. But it won't fix my core issues with Sim. Yeah, I think a Sobo definitely has some, but this is a really complex Sim. So it's going to take him a bit of time to actually get me. I haven't qualified for airliners yet, so you'll have to turn the Cessna and Piper. Yeah, no problem with the Cessna and Pipers. Very, very, very important planes. I have no choice but to explore other options. Yeah, I understand, like, everyone's got a different interest. There's no problem with it. Oh, I see you in the air, Mongo. Okay, Mongo's in the air with us now. In the back. There's Mongo, Alec D, through Zeus. And then I see Count Zep. Uh, Count Zep somewhere. Oh, I think he went in paper a bit. Yeah, the wire was turned out to be pretty good, you think? Well, we're close until some update 5. Yeah, um, now, if that's still been a controversial one. Uh, my sim still works fine since then, but I mean, everyone's got different systems. That's the thing about PC. A lot of it has to be because they had to make it work for console, which I mean is an unprecedented market for a flight sim. They want to be console and so be it. Well, it still is a PC sim. It works for console. Console basically for the Xbox One is basically a medium gaming PC. 
just saying. Mm. Okay, there's Count Zepp in Martell ahead of us. I need a PC sim though that has remote control issues. Well, x Play 12 is coming, uh, k -Wart. So hopefully you find more success with x -Play. you guys something um too so um have you guys actually picked up the Cessna uh 337 Skymaster yet and if so uh tell me what you think about it because I know Murph showed him off on Friday um during his flight from Haiti in the Dominican Republic it still surprised me that I get 60 frames on this end and 30 next flight Hmm, that's, that's pretty interesting still, considering I believe Microsoft is more intensive, if you ask me. Maybe because Microsoft has kept optimizing the sim. Yeah, it's kind of weird to say that. It just annoys me because MSF has had a right thing to talk at all. And just... I think they'll fix it. I just, I just think that, um, I think they're still trying to solve all the issues for But it, maybe it's just me being really patient and all that. I flew the Cessna 3, Goblins who says, he flew the Cessna 337 in the last stream. It's, it's a nice plane. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting to see how they model it. The only thing I'm worried about the Cessna is it's Carinado, and once they come out with the plane, they don't really update it. That's what's kept me off from buying Carinado products. If I was wanting to get a plane, I would probably just I'd rather get it with a plane that that can consistently get updates, improvements. That's the kind of planes I like to get. I'm exploring other games while waiting for fixes or explain. Yeah, Cessna they find was a big change. I agree with Martelli. It was a big change. They had to change a lot of it. I, I still think they're working on it now. Last time to the modern planes again. Yeah, I, I'm hoping so too. But I think that was one of the things that explained as well. You couldn't actually mod them. I believe so. Guess what's gonna? I, I'm very excited. For, in three days, we're gonna get the twin on her. That's gonna be so awesome. I can't wait for the Toy Dollar to come out in a couple of days. That, that's going to be awesome. It's going to have real competition with the Kodiak. Um, because they're both turboprop push planes. I know one of the twin engine ones are the thing, but I mean, it's going to be the same price point as the Kodiak. It's going to be very interesting. On one hand, um, the, the, Aer the Aerosoft is going to cut me with more value because you're going to get the floats in that engine. But on the other hand, Kodiak is so falling to it. Like, that, that's really good. Hey, Alex D says, care no lack of updates on their planes to keep them from getting sky cast on. Yeah, it's for the same reason. We've got that correct. For the same reason, that's why I'm not here. I'm back to my set. Good to see you again. Let me see. I want to I change something to more rock. Keep you all up on. Yeah, Carinado 
Careful has not updated much. Yeah, because Careful made some really interesting plays. I mean, they made a Skyling. They made, um, the Cessna 170, though, was the only point I got for, because it was only for 50 bucks. The Cessna 170 is actually pretty solid. Um, they made the Piper the Seneca, the Piper Seminole, and the Seneca. Those are two planes that I see a lot of people really liking. There's, like, a lot of options. Uh, like, they made some pretty cool planes. So... Yeah, the update's the big thing. If, if it made my developer to take care of updates, that would be amazing. Or people would have. has always been like this. Yeah, it's, it's been there. Hello, Sergeant Staff. Good to see you. I still love the movie, but I can't blame the group I use to drive the others. Yeah, the, it's mainly the sounds that have been the issue. They never could fix the sound problem. That's been an issue for quite a few of the planes. Yeah, that's kind of my thing. I, I, that's why I look for quality. For example, um, well, yeah, for example, that's why I'm not picking so many uh, add-on planes. I'm trying to be careful of what planes I'm getting because if I want to buy it with my own money, I want to pick a plane that I would actually enjoy myself flying on. For example, that's why I saved my money for the DC-6 when it was on for sale. That's why I wait for the Kodiak. And that's why I also got the kit box too, because I felt that plane was really good. Because I knew the kit box was going to be great. The Flyer Spitfire is a great developer and everything. The Flyer Spitfire is probably one of the best war birds you can get your money on. Like I said, there's so many. There's also a lot of really good developers who would update. I mean, I haven't tried one of the new biz planes. Yeah, apparently there's a sound bug, so overlap the other end. Yep, that, that is the major bug a lot of people are having. All that sound bug. I'm waiting for big radio freeze. Yes, the goose. I haven't got the widget yet, Sergeant Staff. I, I think I should probably get the widget at some point. But yeah, the goose. They made a great three row one. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how good the, the new goose is. That's going to be up. I'm hoping it's really good. Because, again, they're never really cool plane, but I fly the widget a lot. I won't fly our Caradon planes until they fix the sound box. I agree with you. That's a huge issue. That's why I don't touch the Caradon stuff. So Murph did his uh, news thing uh, yet last night. He released the news. So he talks about quite a few um, other things as well in the news. One of the big things he revealed to the news was he talked about the PC-12 from Civil Studios. That is absolutely going to be awesome. PC-12, we finally did a hardware plane that can rival the TVM. But now, with basically, it'd be everything you want for the TVM, but with more features. That would be awesome. Now, the Mark A. Spitfire had the same. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's another thing, too. That's from Airplane Heaven. The sounds have been the, it's the same thing as carrying out the sounds of indication in Airplane Heaven. I'll be really disappointed to do some that. Right? Yeah. I am looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, the PC-12, I am looking forward to that too, because I'm looking forward to that as well, the PC-12. Because it, it, considering how good the Kodiak is, that makes me even more excited, because 
you think it blew up when you did the Kodiak? Yeah, forget the TVM. This... Hmm. And the fact they're coming out with both... Both a mixed steam glass and a custom glass cockpit? Yeah, that's gonna be... That's gonna be really cool. I really do like the widget. Yeah, I probably should get it at some point. Thanks for the recommendation there, uh, Sergeant Staff. I know that you've worked on Gwidget before. There's so few planes in that business that's cracking. Yeah, there's another one working on it too. I think someone's making a Honda jet. Which is produced by uh, Honda, Honda Aircraft. Guys, if you don't mind, I have one more PowerPoint uh, for today, and we're going to talk about the city of Omsk, which is um, located in, the, in its own oblast of Omsk. It's the administrative center and the largest city um, in, it, in its area. It has a population of over 1 million people. It's actually the second largest city in, in Siberia after Novosibirsk. Nova it is Russia's ninth largest city. Now, Omsk is a very important transport node, and it served as a major train station for the Trans-Siberian Railway, and it's a staging point for the Irish River. Now, during the Imperial Era of Russia, this, this was the seat of the Governor General of Western Siberia, and later, the Governor General of the Steppes. During, during the brief period of the Russian Civil War in 1918 to 1920, it served as the capital of the anti-Bolshevik Russian state and held the gold reserves from the Imperial Era of Russia. Now, Omsk was first founded back in 1716, and it has been a city since 1782. It was originally built at, by a fortress in this sort of stuff as well. And in 1822, it became the administrative capital of Western Siberia, as well. Now, Omsk is well known for, for having a pretty humid climate, with its dramatic seasonal swings of weather between winter and summer. One of the things that this city is known for is, is its unique piece of architecture. The two major chapels, including the Omsk Dormaton uh, Cathedral, which is one of the largest Orthodox churches in all of Russia, down there. Now, now some of the landmarks here you can find in Omsk, they include the Cathedral of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the Omsk State Museum of History and Regional Studies can be found here as well, which is right here. And then some notable people include Mikhail Ulanov, who, um, who is a very well-known Soviet actor during the uh, 1950s. And he was one of the most recognized pe people of the post-war II Soviet theater and cinema. It was involved in quite a few important uh, films during the Soviet era. The other one is Fyodor Donovsky. And basically for those, Theodore Doryevsky is one of the more well-known um, Russian authors and poets during the 19th century. So definitely two very important people with Omsk as well. Okay, let me get back to chat. I've been reading that stuff. Off. You eat, um, I saw a real life. Well, my uncles were storing one right now, the Wigeons. Nice. Or tell once I've seen other different F-18s around. I saw an F-18S in the paint, which shows A-20. That is because, um, that, he might have had the F-18 Warrior mod on, which gives the F-18S. That's probably what it is. Either that, or he had a different livery. One of the two. 
I saw a review of a re by a real life pilot on the Honda Jet. Ah, nice. UA Pilot reviews the Honda Jet yesterday on YouTube. Honda Jet being cool, and it's also confirmed that it would be free. What? Wait, the Honda Jets can be free? Oh, I oh I definitely could be interested in the Honda Jet. No, I'm not really a business jet pilot though. But I would the free? That sounds fantastic. Modern part update, read them if you can, great stuff, free on ebook. Nice. By the way, do any of you do American Truck Simulator? I don't have it though. Unfortunately, I don't have American Truck Simulator, and even if I do, I don't really have uh, a steering wheel here in The only thing I'm lacking is steering wheel. I do have the pedals for it, but I don't have it, so unfortunately, I don't have it. But thanks for asking though, k -Wart. Let's see who's still in the air with us. We have Count Zep uh, still with us. Mongo, Drew Zeus, Ally D. Here's Count Zep. I think Mark Tell's around here somewhere. Um. Zeus has done both American Trust and the European one. Ah, interesting. Combo and multiplayer is excellent. It's like playing offline. Ah, cool. I didn't think about that. We're actually not too far. We're around 59 miles away. We're not far from all from the trip. We should get there pretty quickly. We can keep this up. I'm thinking that after this, we read, uh, I'm hoping we read Angry One of One. I think that would be a really cool read. Because I don't, unless it's something new, I don't know. I'm usually going to read people I know because they're people who've interacted with me in my community. I did a delivery of two DC-3s. Oh, that... Oh, that's cool. Two DC-3s? Yeah. Yeah, DC-3 is a classic plane. Now, I'm hoping um, in September, I'm, I'm going to be heading to Seattle for a cruise. I'm really, really hoping I get to visit the Museum of Flight in Seattle. I'm really hoping, depends on the uh, time we get off from the airport to the time we get the cruise departing. I'm really hoping we get, I get to go see the flight. Because they got all sorts of planes there. They got some Boeings. They got, I mean, we can see the Boeings and all that. Cool. So I'm pretty excited for it. Um, now, if you're wondering why there's so. You part, you both part on the apron and start saying, my fellow, cool. Um, if you guys wonder why the scenery is acting like that, you see all the blotches. Well, satellite data in Siberia is not that great. There's not a lot of people living around here because, like I said, Siberia is cold and, and it's and because it's so vast, the data it here isn't that great. Yeah, they have a. You have a concord. Yeah, I think one of the concords is in Seattle. I believe the museum flight happens. Yeah, they have a concord in Seattle. Yeah, they, it's actually outside of there. 29% fuel. I, I think I have enough fuel for this. I 
I was impressed by the DC uh, Concord cockpit, though the exterior looked good. Yeah, the exterior of it is quite unique one too. The way the nose is, definitely very unique. Now I know the Soviets made their own version of it. It's called the Tublev, I think it's the T-144. Yeah, it's a Tubla T-144, the world's first commercial supersonic plane. Speaking about Russian planes and sim, um, the Anzov A-2 is going to come out, I believe, February, I believe. I think they moved it back. But, and that's going to come to the sim for 15 bucks. So, it's going to be released with a Sobo and all that, too. So, I'm looking forward to that one. I mean, it's a biplane, it's a push plane. I'm really, really looking forward to the A and 2. So, I'm hoping the A and 2 comes in so I can fly a Russian plane in the simulator. And I mean, ATS are the same people that made the Pre Pre and, and the Piaggio. So, they already made all those points for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So, I'm, I'm really hopeful the A and 2 beat is really good. I would, I would love to have that. Yeah, Russia copied their Concord stuff, but the model crashed in the... Yeah, that was, that was an infamous, um, yeah, air truck disaster. Yeah. They also built and flew a dirty nuclear plane. Yeah. Yeah, Russian aviation. Um, very, very interesting story. That's for sure. We're, we're actually around 30 nautical miles away from Pops. We should um, be here for a good time at, at 1607. We should arrive right here by 1607. Actually, we're past 407 already. So, we should probably move the time an hour. God, love Yonker though. Yeah, Yonker is a, it, it's a fantastic plane. If you love vintage planes and you love uh, old fashioned this is definitely definitely one. Oh yeah, they have uh according to the up, they have it in the Technic Museum Center. Yeah, that is the uh, the Tech Museum in Berlin, I believe. I could be wrong, but... Oh, actually it's in Sysheim, Germany, which is um, outside of... It's in West, it's Southwest Germany. Oh. oh yeah, they got lots of aircraft here too. They got some walking planes, Concord, T-144, the Yonkers. Then there's a Canada Air Seal 215, and then a 2 blood T-134. Um, the one there is it is a T2B one. Um, actually, the 
Uh, the one in the museum I think you mentioned is is a, is a CSA 320L. Uh, it's a Spanish built uh, version of it. I'm not sure the sound of it, but I like would like, yeah, why so well too. It almost flies itself. Yeah, that's another reason why I'm just just let it fly itself. It's so easy, it just flies itself. It's stable, younger than EC6 is my favorite. I definitely need to fuck youngers. <laughs> but no, the J52 is definitely yeah, my favorite. Flies easily, flies smooth. It can go quite fast if you want to, you'd be quite surprised. It goes max speed on harbor for three knots. Like I said, quite a piece of this one. Let's see, there's Count Zep. Nobody lives near the Pacific Coast. That was quite a summary war for the Tonga. Yeah, I heard that in the news. Thankfully, no one's really hurt them. I'm very grateful for that. Just got back, but was listening on the phone. Everything said was true. Do not buy the new version of the aircraft. ET-21. Yeah, I am not buying that. From Dino's? No, I know not to buy that. I know that's crap. I know that's crap. It basically, that point is like, if someone take the model, it looked like it took someone took a model, remodeled a free printer, and just made a plane straight up. Basic cockpit and such. Flat too. It looks slow and cool and nice with you. Yeah, it is the plane I like for VR VR flying. Yeah, especially the retrofit version. The retrofit version um, is actually one of my favorite planes for VR flying because the VR thing on that is so easy to learn. Just type in the radio and it will give you a simple point direction. Talk about talking about about Australian rail. Yeah, uh, yeah, to our left is our rail line. There's the rail line now. Now, for guys who don't know, the rail line is what they fall for most of the journey, is they fall to the rail lines. And, and Rush was built with a lot of railways, um, because if you recall, um, that's the main way they had to get through all of Russia. Yeah, garbage, LOL. Yeah, the demo thing is garbage. Just, I'm not even... I'm not even I wouldn't want a PC-21, but this one is crap. PC-21 is the French Army trainer. Yeah. I've been here three years ago. Not sure if they have the Concord already. I know, I know what we need. I was thinking, instead of the, um, the Concord, no, 477, why, 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 why hasn't anyone brought 
the T95 Bear into the sim. I mean, for those who don't know, the T95 is a Russian strategic bomber that we use. That's still been used since the 1950s. It's four turboprop engines with contra rotating propellers. I mean, it can go faster than the max cruise. It's very recruitment, it's faster than the max of the PBM. It can go up to max speed of 499 knots. It has a range of 8,100 nautical miles. And it's so loud that the face of the country is worth 13 propellers. Most submarines could probably hear you. Not to seem to assume that MSF has marketplace sells products that are blue screen. That's the unfortunate thing. That's one of the big other reasons I'm so hesitant about the MSF and marketplace. There's no quality control. There's no quality control, and I think that's definitely a big issue. Yeah, quality control is an issue for the Ibsen marketplace. They they gotta really work on it. I think I think what should be in the Microsoft store is probably the, the companies they probably partnered with. And probably ones that are pre-screened in other places, like uh, Sim Market, like Sim Market. Or just fly, or all these other places that are screened and everything for quality reviews. Like that should be the best case scenario. I don't think it'll ever happen. They have the Concord and they have the Tula. That's a good reason to visit again. The reviews should also show the buyer's comments. Yes, yes, they. That that's another thing we did. Yeah, I agree. Like customer advocacy is very important. 100% agreed. There's Mongo, Druid Zeus. Um, we should probably, I'm gonna do, um, the one way, we're not getting that far. Um, I'm gonna land on, we're actually, I'm gonna actually turn around and fly over the city and land on one way two five. Just do a quick fly over a mob and then we just land one way two five. How's that sound, guys? And then we can conclude our journey. Um, for this leg. I mean, I'm so far, I mean, I've been extremely impressed with how much this channel has grown in 2022. Like, over 200 plus followers now. I mean, another big rave with Fabio, getting this journey started. Yep. Yeah, probably 25 it is. Yeah, we're I'm just going to do a quick fly over our ops and we make our landing. Love the history, great strong. Let's get you to one, get to one K one day. Yeah, at least get me to 500 first, because I'm working hard for that two tone Murphy affiliate. So I want, I'm putting a lot of work. Hey, who's Blamo with the follow? 
thank you much, Blambo. I really appreciate it. Thank you for uh, getting the follow. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. So the main airport um, here is um, Austin Institutional Airport. This is the airport we are going to land today. Um, now this airport was open all the way back. It was open, it was open for a long time. There's lots of different air routes. You can fly here from Kazan, Moscow, Prosser Norsk, Nor Sultan, lots of different airlines. This airport was also infamous um, when government critic Alexei Navalny was poisoned and he fell ill there on August 20th, 2020. One K Captain campaign whoop those two cats. Yep, I wanna get I wanna earn it though. So here's the airport down over here. Let's go ahead and just lower down the altitude a little. I appreciate you being here two cats in the chat. I appreciate you being here. Like I said, I appreciate everyone being here. Like, that's what makes this community awesome, is everyone here. Everyone here, no matter in the chat, or fly with me, are amazing. Mr. Nobody, 5477, thanks. Thanks. No problem. No, thanks for everyone. I really appreciate it. I'm doing great. Um, we're making our final stop here at OMS. We're going to land on runway 25. If you're curious about joining me, um, I'm on the Southeast Asia server. And maybe you can catch me landing. But yeah, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I've had a fantastic flight uh, today. Got a big raid from Deep Decimus. I feel fantastic up here. I hope you're doing all right yourself, Mr. Nobody. So yeah, I'm very, I love, I love you, mate. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a good time, you know. Yeah, I'm very excited for this coming week from Flight Sim. I mean, Otter's coming out. The, um... That's going to come on the 19th. I got big plans for this week. Um, I'll talk more once we get land, uh, landed, so I'm going to go ahead. There's, now, here's the city of Omsk. Now, unfortunately... None of the Russian cities have photogrammetry, so it's just plain scenery. So here's Omsk, here's the downtown part of it, right here. Welcome to Omsk. Hmm. Final MS Market Voice comments. The Market Voice sometimes has defeated the Electric Versions. 
Yeah, that's... Yeah, the, the fly-by-wire A320... Working tile A323 wear. Yeah, it's the fly-by-wire A320. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a shame because the fly-by-wire 320 is one of the best free wear you can get. They have done an amazing work with that three A320 of theirs. Oh yeah, do you also remember the PMDG DC6 for doll from Xbox? That was defective and they had to pull up in the marketplace. Which unbelievably sucks. Like, sucks is gonna put it lightly. So guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and predict this in the chat. Predict my lane, uh, lane rate in the Yonkers. I'm predicting minus 95. ahead and mute as we're going to get our way landing. So Martel goes with minus 90. Now in the notes, um, they arrived here at 1607. Now Omsk at the time when he did this airport was had 130,000 inhabitants. It had a pretty modern through the streets. Um, and the airport was in good condition. Now, at the time, it had three wooden hangars, the fourth being under construction during this time. So now we're going to tip and make this landing in the Yonkers. Um, this should be interesting how it turns out. Yeah, going to change the um, trim, so that way it can bleed off a bit of the speed. And that should be down. So uh, let me go back to my sim toolkit. Minus 65 feet per second. That was a great landing. That is smooth. Unfortunately, the bot's not working, but yeah, minus 65 feet per second. Um, feet per minute is our landing, which is. Yeah, that's butter smooth one. So let's get back. Let me go ahead and park next to count uh Zep. And let's get back to Um our view. Let's see the other people trying to land here today. Whoosh blammo, nice, thanks. Yeah, that was butter. Hmm. <laughs> That's what I do when I uh, try to land the Yunkers, is trying to get the trim as uh, up as I can, so it would be a nice smooth landing. There's Mungo in the in the Yunkers J52. Martel and Alec D both in the Turbo Arrows. I still haven't got the Just White Arrows yet. That's that's awesome, everyone. This has been this has been a great flight, and here goes Mongo. K fifty two, you nearly got. Oh, that's an amazing landing, Mongo. That's a fantastic landing. Great landing. That that's fantastic. Nice! That was that was near perfect. That's awesome. Nicely done.
Here comes Alec D in the Turbo Arrow, a plane I don't have, unfortunately. Because I'm not made of money. Mm. 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 And, hey, good landing. That's a good land, Alec. Nicely done. Now we have two people landing for next is Druid Zeus. Let's see if we get that down. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, Druid Zeus. Oh, oh, you bounced it. Oh, it looks like you bounced it. Oh. Was that live water? Because it looked like you slid through the snow. And finally, Martell in the Turbo Arrow. Let's see if we get it down. Let's see. And... I think he's got it. That's good. It looks great. Hey, nice. Nicely done, everyone. Nice. Now, once we do that, we're going to go ahead and take a picture of all of you guys here that join me on this wonderful flight. But seriously, I mean, I, I can't say thank you to all you guys now. Thank you, Dinky, for the raid. Thanks for the new follows today. Three new follows today. The, actually, four new follows today. An awesome raid from Dinky Decimus. Thank you guys so much. All the people in the chat, everyone who's flown with me, thank you guys so much. Um, I think we should probably raid... Um, we probably should raid... Hmm, I think we should raid Angry One Horn today. I think he probably could use the viewers. So, uh, before I get off, let me go ahead and take this picture for all of you guys here. No problem. Thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate it. So, guys, this is Link 6. We made it safely to Omsk. Mm. So, let's go ahead and raid Angry One Horn, shall we? I think it would be really, really cool. So, I want to thank everyone here for this fantastic flight everyone thank you so much mm -hmm. so let's go ahead and rate angry one horn so before we get going on wednesday at at 700 zulu i'm hoping to take the twin otter um uh, through the mountains of peru we'll be visiting quite a few areas there and then on and then on next sunday we will do leg seven of the trip from omsk all the way to our our destination at the place known as um Nova Sovereign. So take care everyone. Viper Strike 95 out.